I asked the top scientists in this several times, do we really have to get down to near zero? Can't we just you know, cut it in half or a quarter? And the answer is that until we get near to zero, the temperature will continue to rise. And so that's, that's a big challenge. Now, we put out a lot of carbon dioxide every year, uh, over 26 billion tons. Somehow we have to make changes that will bring that down to zero. It's been constantly going up, so we have to go from rapidly rising to falling and falling all the way to zero. And so what we're going to have to do at a global scale is create a new system. And so we need energy miracles. Now, when I use the term miracle, I don't mean something that's impossible. You know, the, the microprocessor is a miracle. The personal computer is a miracle. Uh, the internet and its services are a miracle. So the people here have participated in the creation of many miracles. Apollo 11, 15 July 1969, Cape Kennedy, Florida, the night before the great day. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space. And none will be so difficult or expensive to accomplish. Six million pounds of machine, 36 stories tall. minutes, 10 seconds and counting. Oxidizer tanks from the second and third stages now have pressurized. T minus one minute, 35 seconds. The third stage completely pressurized. T minus 15 seconds, guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. Six. Three days, falling upward to the moon. Griffin, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Buzz is erecting the solar wind experiment now. <laughs> Thank you.
Columbia fired out of lunar orbit to begin its three-day fall back to Earth, where the recovery fleet was waiting for its splashdown in the Pacific. Roosevelt issued an order. Whatever it took, the U.S. had to be the first to develop an atomic bomb. One man, General Leslie Groves, was given unprecedented authority and unlimited funds to make it happen. Groves set up facilities in New Mexico, in Washington State, and at Oak Ridge, Tennessee. For the next three years, no site in the United States was more important, more closely watched, or more secret. And yet Groves had to bring tens of thousands of workers here. He had to quickly build a whole new town from scratch. The initial brief was to create homes for 13,000 people, scientists, engineers, soldiers, construction workers, laborers. This new community would need shops, hospitals, schools for their kids. At the project's peak, 75,000 people would live here. The first workers moved in on July 27, 1943. They came in their thousands from all over the U.S., answering job advertisements to join the war effort. But with the basic structures in place, the security, the manpower, and the resources, the real work could finally begin. Building the bomb would require vast uranium processing plants, which would lead to the largest construction project that the world had ever seen. Hidden from the world was a city for 75,000 workers and a nuclear processing plant called Y-12. The race was on to enrich enough uranium for the world's first atomic bomb. 100 pounds of uranium was required. Its production demanded an extraordinarily complex process that had never been attempted before. What followed was to be the most costly and most labor-intensive engineering program in history. General Groves, who ran the Manhattan Project, ordered the immediate construction of nine huge industrial buildings. Each of the nine buildings averaged 300 by 500 feet in size. Producing uranium for an atomic bomb was completely uncharted territory. Speed was of the essence and there was no time to experiment or test the process. The largest and most expensive electromagnets ever built. To work, they needed miles of copper wire. Uranium would be heated and fed out into the enormously powerful magnetic field. This force would be enough to separate tiny amounts of weapons-grade uranium-235 from the original raw material. 38 magnets make up one set of calutrons, and there are 36 calutrons in this building. In total, there were 1,152 calutrons on the site. The power consumed was so vast that for the duration of its wartime mission, Project X would use one-seventh of all electricity generated in the United States. 1,152 machines ran 24 hours a day, seven days a week for a whole year. But the process proved so inefficient that only seven pounds of uranium-235 were produced. Time was running out. No matter how innovative the engineering, to have any hope of meeting the target, a second plant would now have to be brought online at Project X. And this would require the construction of the biggest building in the world. Called K-25, it was a key building in the Manhattan Project, and it was designed to increase production of the desperately needed uranium-235. If they are going to produce the 100 pounds needed to build the bomb, scientists need to find new ways to obtain the precious U-235. The solution was a new type of enrichment plant. 
If building the town at Oak Ridge and the vast electromagnetic separation plant had sapped resources, this new phase was to present the greatest challenge so far. To get the job done, they would have to construct the biggest building in the world. They chose a site 11 miles from the secret city of Oak Ridge. The first pour of concrete alone would cover 200,000 cubic yards. Entire companies were requisitioned to provide the thousands of tons of materials needed. Thousands of construction workers were required. The reason that K-25 had to be so enormous was that the processes going on inside were so complex. But such was the desperate need to enrich uranium to fuel a bomb that no obstacle was too big. Documents show that it occupied two million square feet. It was a half mile long by 1,000 feet wide. It housed 758 miles of copper tubing, 3,800 miles of electrical conductors, and the amount of water used in its processes would have supplied a city of five million. When K-25 began operations, it's recorded that it took a team of 12,000 just to hunt for leaks in the piping, which had to be completely airtight. In July 1944, an armed guard took the first sample of uranium on a 2,000-mile journey from Oak Ridge to New Mexico, where some of the greatest scientists the world has ever known were waiting to work on it. It would be in the buildings of another secret city that the bomb would be armed, tested, and built. Deep in the heart of New Mexico is the most important site of the Manhattan Project, Los Alamos. As with Oak Ridge, Los Alamos was built very quickly. Oppenheimer would later become known as the father of the atomic bomb. He was tasked with gathering some of the finest brains in America to work with him in this isolated location. You've just come from a prestigious university on the east coast of the United States, or perhaps from Europe. You're recruited to work on a secret project you don't even know where. You're taken on a day-long journey over rutted, muddy roads into this encampment that basically looks like it comes out of the middle of nowhere. You're now told, here's where you're going to conduct one of the most innovative scientific endeavors in the history of mankind. You might have thought that you were absolutely crazy and had gone nuts, but that was the reality of those days. Over the course of three years, over 600 technical buildings were constructed. The theory was simple. Shoot one piece of uranium down a barrel to collide with another. The two pieces would fuse together. A nuclear detonation would result. After five and a half years of a war to defeat fascism, Europe was bankrupt. Industry lay in ruins. Homes were in rubble. People struggled to survive.
The man called on by Truman was the newly appointed Secretary of State, General Marshall, the wartime military leader. He would plan the United States' response. He instructed the State Department to begin preparing ideas for a European rescue plan. Billions of dollars would be needed. Would Congress approve this enormous cost? The whole situation is critical in the extreme. In September 1947, 16 European nations signed up for the Marshall Plan and requested $20 billion of aid. In the four years of the plan, the Marshall Agency spent $13.5 billion in 16 countries. One of the countries most in need of help was Greece, devastated by the Nazi occupation and years of civil war. During the four years of the Marshall Plan, Greece received nearly $700 million of economic assistance. Young Americans were thrust into positions of heavy responsibility. The range of projects which uh, we engaged in were all over the map and all over every single sector of the economy. And one could say that America fed and fueled and clothed the Greek nation. The Marshall Plan has been called the greatest example of U.S. public diplomacy done right in history. The more you learn about World War II, the more you realize how incredibly destructive it was, beyond a measure that we can even think about now. You have to look at the photographs in order to see the destruction of the roads, the homes, the factories, all of the industries in certain parts of the European countries, completely destroyed to the extent that they couldn't even rebuild themselves. As a result, some very wise people in the government, George C. Marshall, the Secretary of State, of course, who had been a general in the war, and uh, the president at the time, Truman, made the decision that in order to rebuild Europe, uh, that that would be in the interest of the United States, not only because Europe it was, has always been an important partner to the United States, but also because this seemed to be a pivot point in history a time in which if there was no assistance to help rebuild Europe, then, then other systems of government might come in. The whole situation is critical in the extreme. Uh, but there's no doubt whatever in my mind that if we decide to do this thing, we can do it successfully. And there's also no doubt in my mind that the whole world hangs in the balance as to what it is to be in connection with what we are endeavoring to put forward here. Thank you.